G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at a very, very special barrel indeed. This particular J29 is the J29F. It differs from the J29D by two things. It has a dog tooth wing, which means it's got you know, a funny little shape on the wing that gives it a, a different lift characteristic. I'm not quite sure exactly what. And it also has 20mm cannons, but of course... The main difference being the amazing camouflage. Oh, I forgot. It has 8 air missiles. Honestly, the J29F uh, I found to be a little bit interesting. It's a really good plane. It's basically the J29D, but you need a little bit of gun time. And for that gun time for the 20 mils, because, you know, on the J29D you have 30 millimeter cannons, you sort of swap that out a little bit. So instead of you know, having less time on target, you have air-to-air -air missiles. And honestly, I kind of like it. I think it's different, I think it's great, and I think it is a perfect 8.7. I think it is a decent side grade compared to the J29D, and honestly, it basically flies the same way. There's very little difference. In fact, I think it even has the same engine. It, I, I actually think it does. The uh, de Havilland Goblin engine with the afterburning effect, which is you know, why you see that little red flame behind it. So, this plane, despite being basically a J-29D with different guns and, you know, exchanging them for air-to-air -air missiles, it does have a different playstyle. It doesn't quite play the same way, and that's down to the air-to-air -air missiles. You see, what you want to do if you have air-to-air -air missiles is get behind someone. And in the J-29D, it doesn't really matter where you go, because you have 30mm cannons, you can push head-ons, you can rope-a-dope, you can do basically whatever you'd like, because you have the cannons. Now, of course, you have 20mm cannons, and you can practically do the same thing, but first, I would advise something very strongly. Get rid of your missiles as soon as possible. That doesn't mean spam them off, and if you don't get a chance to, you might as well keep them, because they're better being uh, sort of stashed away, weighing your plane down a little bit, and, you know, potentially being used in a dogfight than uh, being wasted at the start of a match. You can see here that I've decided to go for a little, little side climb here. Not too much, but just enough to get a little bit of separation for the fight to start and me to come in and hopefully swoop someone with the air to air missiles. Perhaps someone who's done a boom and zoom or has done a, a rush and then decided to put themselves in a turn. That Swift is a good candidate there, but I'm thinking of helping out my buddy in the TU4. This uh, TU-4 is probably going to go down, but you know what? He's baiting up a Canberra, he's baiting up two MiGs, and this MiG here is going to be a non-threat to me, simply because he doesn't have the energy to keep up with my turn in the vertical. Now, I've made something like three videos on the J-29D, and it basically flies the same way, except, of course, considering the air-to-air -air missiles. I can see a MiG-15 here, German MiG-15 is going to get absolutely slapped by these missiles, 10G overload, and they do work fairly well within a single kilometer. I would probably recommend using them at roughly one kilometer, but if you have a little bit more, maybe 1.5, 1.6, maybe then you could also use them. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use them below 800 meters, simply because of the uh, time that it takes to to get the missile to speed. It's burning at at that sort of distance. It does have a fairly, you know, decent burn time. I mean. Yeah, compared to other missiles, sure it doesn't, but for this tier, for the closure rates, it certainly does. So, I see this MiG-15, I'm going to put myself into a vertical again. The J-29F and the J-29D both play really, really nicely. They have this really good energy retention, and you can just play them a little bit fast. So, for those of you who play the MiG-15 and know the MiG-15 well, I would probably consider it a mix between a MiG-15 and perhaps a Hunter, perhaps something that has decent energy retention. You can see there, a little bit of spray, and that's the uh, the 20 mils. I'm still running the default belts, but honestly, if you have a decent amount of gun time, you're gonna have a good time in these. So, F-86F down below, I thought he was gonna hit the dirt, but uh, he doesn't, and I go for the MiG-15 instead. Now, I don't wanna be launching a missile at him because he's near the sun, but I managed to, uh, yeah, whiff my shots a little bit. Not great, but I switched the afterburner off, and this is something that you should be doing in this plane. If you need to get behind someone, obviously, if you in, if you are not confident that your 
teammates are going to, you know, come and take anything that's going to come onto your six, then obviously don't reduce your throttle. Speed is king in jets. And you can see this Swift is exactly doing that. He's putting his speed to use. The Swift F1 in this case is able to get away from me only just. I think he's faster than me by a couple of kilometers per hour. And I'm also not quite spaded. So I think I only top out at 1030, whereas I think he tops out at 1050. I'm not quite sure. But there goes my last air-to-air -air missile, and I'm going to sort of follow him. Except, I'm going to do what I do best, and put myself into a little climb. You see, if someone is running away from you, the best thing, in my opinion, to do, if they're getting some distance, is turn your, your speed into altitude. Because that way, you're saving up potential energy for a dogfight later. So... I can see that one of my teammates is going on towards him, so I think, you know what, that's fine, I'm going to let him have the kill, because I'm pretty sure, pretty confident, that you can get behind and stick behind the Swift F1. It doesn't have the acceleration of the Swift F7, and so you can't really do all these prolonged dogfights with it. It only has one thing, and that is to run. And if, you, if you're running that thing forever, you know, someone is going to collect you at the end of the day. So... I'm noticing that my teammates still have a couple of G91s to deal with, so I'm going to go and help them out instead. I feel like I'm much more useful over this way than, you know, chasing a single Swift F1. I can also see that I need to make my my kills count. I need to start getting kills, and the uh, the G91 there to the right in uh, in chat seems like he's having a bad time. So you know what? I'm going to be a nice guy. Uh, he's already got a MIG on his uh, six, so I'm going to go for the other G91, which actually turned out to be an extremely wise decision. This particular G91 is on its own, and, you know, a 1v1 is is okay for me, especially in the G91 and the J29F. You see, they're quite well balanced against each other. The G20, the, the G91, oh, getting them confused now, has the guns, it has the low speed acceleration, and it has the turn rate, whereas the J29 has a little bit of everything, but more towards that speed and that energy type of maneuver, and as long as I can keep my energy above the G91, he's pretty much gone. And the Swift goes for a little he head on. Um, yeah, nah, I ain't having any of that. I don't care if it's two 30 mils or four 30 mils, they are Aiden cannons. I don't want to borrow that shit. You can go and, uh, yeah, have a nice day. So, speaking of having a nice day, this uh, G91 decides to come back towards me and doesn't have a nice day because he's lost his tail control. G91, again, Mr. Mr. BF109. Actually, you know what? I kind of like that name. It's kind of it's kind of weird, but it's kind of cool at the same time. A little bit wearaboo, but you know what? I'll I'll take it. I think it's a I think it's a cool name. What isn't cool though, oh, I don't know, I shouldn't be complaining. But he's putting himself into some really aggressive defensive maneuvers, and I'm I'm gonna try and follow. But here's where the J29 has a little bit of a weakness. Its rudder is really, really crap. And its guns are very, very far under the fuselage. So the distance between the wings and the guns is a lot higher than, say, a Hunter, if you're talking just straight out vertical distance. Whereas on a, on a plane like the MiG, say the MiG or the G91 even, the guns are actually close to the wing. And for some reason, it makes aiming at close distances really, really finicky. So... I'm going to whiff a lot of shots here, but you can see I'm able to roughly stick on top of him because I'm just playing that little bit of energy. I'm going vertical when I need to, and there's the sort of rudder and the elevator sort of coming into play. And once more, we'll see the exact same thing, except I get a really nice hit. Again, I think that's the default bot belts, but um, yep, have a look at that. The Swift is coming back, and I sort of need to get out of the way of it. I'm not really paying attention. I'm thinking, oh, I've still got time. I've still got time. But the Swift is extremely fast. He's going to close in really quick. And you can see there, I panic a little bit. And I'm going to put the nose down. It's simple. And I'm going to turn in towards him. And then away. And then away a little bit more. And then continue straight. He oofs it into the ground. Which I kind of like that to be my kill. But you know what? I'll, I'll take it. I'll take that as kill number five. <laughs> so, G91R3 is now sort of running towards me. The G91R3 has really good acceleration all the way to 600 kilometers per hour. Have a look at my speed, and have a look at when I start to lose the G91. It's exactly after I pass 600 kilometers per hour. I feel like the G91 and the MiG-15 both have this sort of feature, whereas the J29 seems to be able to keep a decent acceleration 
almost all the way to 900 kilometers per hour, where it then shoots off a little bit more, kind of like the Hunter F1, and I guess the Hunter F6, and uh, there was another plane that I completely forgot about that sort of has that same feature. So what I'm going to do now is that I've built up a little bit of distance and a little bit of energy is I'm going to take him into a vertical and try and rope it over him. The G91R3 has really good acceleration because it has a light airframe and a very powerful engine. But because of the light airframe, it doesn't retain energy nearly as well. So I'm going to dive onto him again. You can see he's put himself up into a vertical and he's now panicking. This is a situation where I've got him as long as I can get the guns on target. And you can see, I'm not really having that success. <laughs> so I do what I do in a prop, go vertical and boom in the zoom. It sort of works in both ways. And I really like having to uh, employ this situation in this sort of tactic. The G91 again goes for a little bit of a vertical and realizes that he ain't got any more energy left so he's going to level out and I'm going to finish him with the 20s. The J29F is probably one of the more interesting Swedish fighters in the entire game. I mean, they're all really interesting, to be honest. And frankly, I've had an absolute blast playing every single Swedish plane in the entire tree. Perhaps maybe with the exception of one of the J21s. Maybe that's because it was my first one and I'm just trying to get used to it. But honestly, these planes are... Fantastic. All the Swedish tree has been absolutely perfect. The planes and I guess the the, pre the premium planes have been decent. They've been very good and they've also been, you know, not, not pay to win. I mean, the Pyotr Mirsky is probably a little bit on the pay to win side, but a small battle rating change won't really hurt that. On top of that, the J29D, I think whilst I prefer it over the J29F, is certainly neither better nor worse. And honestly, that's the perfect situation. That's exactly what you want to have. And I predicted this in the, on the dev server as well. I thought, yep, we're going to have a side grade, and it's going to be great. And lo and behold, it's perfect. I think it is really, really fine. The 20 mils are a lot more forgiving as well. So if you're a newer player, then maybe the J29F is going to be a lot more fun than the J29D for you if you've uh, purchased that plane. But honestly, at the same time, I, I just enjoy it. I've had an absolute blast. Normally, this sort of patch is, is extremely challenging and extremely stressful. Uh, well, not stressful, but a really steep learning curve. And honestly, I feel like I've grow, like greased in just beautifully into the Swedish tree. And that's partially because of the planes themselves. They just work well with maybe my playstyle, maybe just the way that I enjoy the game. I suppose they're also really good with friends, and that's one thing that I've been doing a lot more of. I would highly recommend that you play with friends, because this particular tech tree is just really well suited to that sort of wolf pack type gameplay, and it's really rewarding. Even if you don't get one, or, if if you don't get more than one or two two games that are high kill, often I get you know two or three kills a game, maybe one, maybe an assist every now and then. But honestly, it doesn't really matter because you have that battle activity. You have the hits, the crits, the assists. You have a decent amount of fun. And honestly, that to me is some of the most important stuff when you play any online video game. And the Swedish tree embodies that perfectly. Especially the J29s being both interesting, unique, challenging, and yet not entirely broken. Things that have come to the game in the past year have indeed been broken, pay to win, Perhaps power creepy. The MiG-21 SMT is a good example of that, in fact. But the Swedish tree is perfect. It is extremely well balanced, in my opinion. And there isn't a single plane that I would... I mean, there are some planes that I would modify their battle rating. Or their air spawn, or whatnot. But honestly, for the most part, it's been really fun and really balanced. And that's something I've got to give credit to Gaijin for. So, ladies and gentlemen... That was a nice little ace in the J29F, a plane that I've been getting used to and falling in love with, and I hope you do too. Anyway, ladies and gents, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.